is a cis control volume has a shortcoming, a cis control pressure has a shortcoming. Well, guess what? A cis control as a whole has a shortcoming. What I mean by that is, is a cis control. Remember what we talked about with a cis control, right? It doesn't matter who initiates a breath. Every single time, if you're in a volume mode or pressure, it doesn't matter, same concept applies. Every single time the patient takes a breath, it ventilates them. It assists them with a controlled volume of whatever you programmed it to. So let's use our example of 500 cc's again. When you program a ventilator, you assume that you set the backup rate to 12, you're making an assumption the patient is breathing 12 times a minute. We don't make an assumption on what the patient is actually doing. We make the assumption on them not breathing, not able to do anything, because that's the only thing we can control. We can't control how many breaths they take on their own. So we can control the backup rate. So we set it to 12 breaths a minute. We set the tidal volume, let's say for example, to 500 cc's and your medical director might have a chart for you to look at that talks about ideal body weight or whatever it is. Follow your protocol for that. But if you're gonna do 500 cc's of tidal volume, you're basing your minute volume. And remember what minute volume is, it's the rate times the tidal volume. You're basing your minute volume on 12 breaths a minute, 500 cc's of tidal volume, meaning that patient's minute volume should be around 6,000, right? So 6,000 cc's is your minute volume for this patient. And you can do that very well with a patient who's not breathing on their own. We have complete control. We know exactly what their minute volume is gonna be. Minute volume is the thing that throws off somebody's CO2 levels and their pH levels. That is the, the quickest way to do it short of bicarb, like I said earlier. If the patient initiates a breath above the rate that we have on there, let's say they're breathing slightly above the ventilator. So the ventilator is set to 12 breaths a minute. Let's say they breathe 20 times a minute. So they're initiating a few of their breaths or they're breathing 20 times a minute on their own. If they're breathing 20 times a minute now and I've got it set at 500 cc's, guess what? Every single breath is gonna be 500 cc's. So what does that do to the minute volume? Well, I programmed the machine based on a minute volume of 6,000 cc's now they're breathing 20 times a minute, 500 cc's each. Now their minute volume is 10,000. It's nearly double what I have there. So you can see how that can quickly change somebody's pH level. So assist control is a great mode of ventilation when the patient is not breathing. It's a great mode of ventilation if you want to assist them with a controlled volume of breaths every single time they take a breath. Where it doesn't work out so well is when the patient is breathing rapidly when they're hyperventilating, or when a patient has an erratic respiratory pattern, either due to um, a head injury or diabetic ketoacidosis or anything like that. So anybody that is breathing erratically or very rapidly, hyperventilating, assist control is probably not the best mode of ventilation. Why? It throws off their pH levels, right? It throws off their CO2 levels. So that's why they developed another mode of ventilation, SIMV. And SIMV is Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilations. That's what it stands for. Um, not important that you remember that, but you should just remember that it is different than assist control. 